Um, I'm delighted to perform here this afternoon. Uh, it's really wonderful to have been invited. And yes, I'm going to uh, demonstrate three pieces. Um, the first is actually set in 1913, so we're looking at the last century. Um, throughout history, we have seen many developments uh, with ideas and concepts shaping the way which we actually live our lives. Um, with so many advances in all aspects of our life, uh, particularly in the last hundred years, uh, music composition is no different. And it has evolved to give future generations a snapshot, I believe, of how we live in our present moment in time. Um, so, I'm going to bring, begin our programme with Debussy's Syrinx, uh, written in 1913. And this was the first significant piece written for solo flute, actually since C.P. Bach's Sonata in A minor, and that was 150 years beforehand. Uh, so Syrinx was initially considered an Impressionist work, um, which at the time there was a symbolist movement in French literature. Um, actually, Debussy renounced this claim. He felt that I'm trying to do something different, but uh, something real. So... In his, in his music, it actually does have an impressionist feel, um, and improvisational as well. Uh, in the original, there were no breath marks or, or measures, bar lines. And we can actually, as a performer, really get into the music and enjoy putting our interpretation onto it. Um, so, Syrinx um, is based on the cl uh, classical mythology, where a nymph admired for her chastity was pursued by the amorous Greek god Pan. Seeking refuge at the river edge, Syrinx transformed herself into hollow river reeds. And Pan, in his rejection and dismay, unknowingly killed his love when cutting down the reeds to fashion into panpipes, creating his haunting instrument, Syrinx, le pain de flu.
Uh, the 20th century saw a vast array of compositional outputs. Um, there were bountiful developments in musical style and in form. Uh, I found that fantasies capture nostalgia, uh, passion, and a lot of bravado. Um, but we see the harsh and dissonant world of the time uh, reflected in many works. A work I don't have time to perform today, but one which I do admire, uh, Edgar Varsé. Uh, Edgar Varsé actually captures the noise world um, of the urbanized society and of industry at the time. His solo work was uh, written for a, a platinum, flute, platinum flute, and it's called Density 21.5. Um, however, I'm going, now going to jump for you quite a few years to 1981. Um, it's another improvisational uh, piece in, in style and feel, if not in notation. So Dave Heath's composition, Coltrane. It has a touch of neoclassicism, uh, which looks back at C.P. Arc's actual um, sonata in A minor. Um, but predominantly, you hear modern jazz with its harmony and with its form, and actually the Indian scale and rhythm. Um, in this piece, piece <laughs> Dave Heath gives homage to the legendary Coltrane, the saxophonist. Thank you.
Okay, so that brings us up to uh, nearly into this century. Um, it, the 20th century was the golden age for flautists and for flutes. Um, but I've found that contemporary techniques have gathered speed ever since the turn of the century. Um, Robert Dick, an American composer and flautist, actually pioneered new styles and, and ways to play. Um, I've actually incorporated a couple into Dave Heath's piece. Dave Heath actually went on to continue composing and get more elaborate um, and controversial in some respects, uh, but his, his music is always loved today. So, the person that I'd like to move on to, Ian Clark, his, his repertoire actually was inspired by a lot of Dave Heath's, uh, sorry, Robert Dick's um, memento. What you'll find is that the flute, the Boehm system flute, which is what I play on today, um, was actually created in the mid 19th century, and Syrinx uh, was the first solo piece written for that style of flute. Now, today, um, because we have more well, this is built with semitones, but quarter tones uh, now open up the whole range of music. And there's been a flute actually invented called the Kingma flute. Um, so it just shows how technology is actually progressing in the field of music and art and flutes as well as in every other field of life. Um, so, my final piece, as I said, Ian Clark, actually my former professor from the Guildhall, um, he has written many, many... Um, many forms of music now, and this one was actually programmatic in style, written in 1993. Um, it begins off with residual tones. We're painting a picture of a steam train, and at the beginning you will hear residual tones with the train heard in afar. Suddenly we hear explosive harmonics coming through as the train rushes past us. Uh, next, you'll hear some flutter tonguing with some vocal effects, and they see us sailing through villages and through the countryside until our journey is actually slowed down, um, and you can hear the train struggling to change gear as we go through different multiphonics, um, reaching the summit, finally, the summit of the hill, uh, where we'll hear a whistle cry, and uh, steam is released as we plummet down through tumbrel trills and quarter tones uh, down until the to the bottom of the hill. And so here is the great train race. <laughs> 